Howdy, everybody. I hope you're having an amazing day today uh, because today I will be presenting the giant leaf, also known as the gigantium insect and the type of me mechanism that makes the insect unique and better than my partners. Ooh. All right, this is Javi, and my name is Sam Hesse. Howdy, how are y'all doing today? <clears throat> We're going to be debating um, which animal has better defense mechanisms, and um, I'm defending the Hel Helimorpha halus, uh, also known as the brown stink bug. So, once again, today we will be debating on which of these two insects has better defense mechanism. Both of these insects have many important assets, but we are going to find out which one has the greatest defense. Um, what do y'all think? I mean, mine's a leaf and mine is the brown stink bug. So, you know, which one can really make um, can protect himself better. better. So the giant leaf insect is a large species of leaf insects with the scientific name of the gigantium. So the leaf insects are insects um, like just in, as a stick, basically like they look um, as the leaf. So their veins are actually um, similar to an actual leaf. So the gigantium is one of the largest species of leaf insects that is kept as a pet. So that's, that's pretty cool, cool, you know? Um, it was first described by George Robert Gray in 1832, so that's like generations like ago, So, which has his first phasmid he discovered. Leaf insects have extremely flattened, irregularly shaped bodies, wings, and legs. They are usually about five to 10 centimeters long, so minimum like two to four. Um, they are called leaf insects because they are large. Leatherly, um, four, four wings have veins that look similar to the veins on the particular leaf, type of leaves they inhabit. Its polished name is Lysiac dewoki, which comes from the two dots located on the abdomen just in this species, it does this which comes from two dots caught located on the abdomen, just in this species, as does the scientific name bioculatum, meaning two eyes. So it has two eyes that you really can't see and are by the abdomen. These, uh, these insects are green, broad body, and legs are frequently has spots. So you know how the leaves have like little bumps. They actually have it too, which is pretty cool, but kind of weird when you see them because you kind of get scared. Um, both females and males occur in shades of green, yellow, and orange. Java leaf insects would be greenish or brownish as adults. Males range from 2.6 to 3.5 um, inches. So basically 66 to 94 millimeters. They're pretty small, I guess smaller than females. Um, these species also have hind wings which are used uh, for flying for flying by males but are unused by females. So basically males kind of go so they can attract their women. And so young leaf, the younger ones are about two centimeters so 0 0.79 inches long. They're dark red in color and have a reflex immobility. The species molts five to six times in lifetime. Females are heavy bodied and flightless and each lays about 500 eggs in a lifetime. That's a lot to be in the forest. Uh, the abdomen is narrower at the base and the firmer of the forelegs are dilated. Very good, Javi. That's, a, that's quite an interesting insect. Um, yeah, so guys, uh, I'm going to be talking about the Haliomorpha um, halus, also known as the brown stink bug. Um, first off, it's in the uh, family Pentodinae, and it originated in China, Japan, uh, and the Korean Peninsula, in Taiwan. Uh, the brown stink bug uh, reproduces up to three generations in a year, so you can imagine how many of these guys there are. Uh, it's like you and your grandparents all being made in one year, that's just, that's a ton. Um, 
The cooler areas may only see one generation just because that affects the reproduction, but the warmer areas do see the maximum poten uh, potential of reproduction. Uh, first, 20 to 30 light green eggs are laid underneath the host, a plant leaf. After four to five days, they fully emerge from their eggs and uh, they, they take the color of red. Um, the average adult is approximately 1.7 centimeters long and wide, so you can imagine these guys are really small. Um, it has the same shape as most other stink bugs, uh, kind of just like a egg shape, kind of pointed at the top. Uh, it's quite interesting shape. Um, uh, a Satan name named, the insect is brown and can blend in with many uh, dark objects such as a leaf or a tree. Again, these, these leaves or trees, they need to be uh, very dark for it to be able to blend in. Um, so, uh, the bug eventually made its way up to North America and scientists believe it was simply carried through packing crates. The population of this insect is con uh, consistently growing in North America, mostly because it is the perfect climate for these bugs. So you can imagine these guys came over and now they found their, their dream climate, so they just keep on, keep on reproducting here. Um, whether we like it or not, these insects have a huge impact on human society. This bug is very, uh, it's a very problematic agricultural pest. Um, these bugs have mainly been a problem for the eastern states, uh, but they feed on a variety of fruits and vegetables. Some of the crops that they target are apples, apricots, Asian pears, cherries, corn, grapes, lima beans, peaches, peppers, tomatoes, and soybeans. The way that they attack this food is very interesting. The insect simply sticks its sharp nose like feature into the crop and begins to feed. However, after all said and done, um, uh, the stink bug has some pretty cool features. First of all, they have a set of foul smelling defensive glands under their body. Um, this oftentimes makes predators realize that they don't actually want to eat this bug because why would you want to eat something that smells horrible? Uh, and next, they have a very, uh, very camouflage style body, which is designed to look like a dark leaf, and it blends in with dark trees and even uh, the dirt or soil as well. Finally, uh, on the back of the bug is a shield-like layer, so it's basically like they're carrying a shield on their back. Uh, it covers their entire back, and it's very hard, uh, and it protects them from any uh, predators. One thing is that after hearing about some of these uh, abilities of the brown stink bug, one can infer that they're more, uh, more of a defensive. Uh, style insect rather than a predator. So then your insect has like a turtle shell? Yeah, oh. kind of like a turtle shell. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Well, the giant leaf insect may not be excellent defending itself in a fight. My insect uh, capability is to camouflage, which gives it a lot of um, cons. Um, it allows it to avoid the fight altogether, which puts the insect at less risk of being killed and be eating as a meal. So additionally, the insect has designed its lifestyle in a way that caters to its strengths, making it very difficult uh, meal for a predator. So no one can really see me and you know, and I would not start a fight. And then, so because of this, in my opinion, I believe the giant leaf insect has better defense mechanism than the brown small leaf. Uh, stink bug. However, th that is not to say that the brown stink bug defense mechanisms are not extremely, um, yeah, they're not extremely effective. The giant leaf insect is a great opportunity um, of study as it takes the idea of adapting to the environment to the extreme. So what I'm trying to say by that, it's basically it's the insect's own environment, well at least most I identical resembling that really kind of replicates in its own environment. This provides a unique urgent study scientists, scientists can understand so that they can understand the evolution that led to this amazing species. All right, so yeah, uh, he just described that insect and it, it's what a what an interesting creature it is. It's, it's awesome. But mine's um, better still. Yeah, <laughs> but the giant leaf insect has some very neat features, however, there are many things I noticed about it that make it seem weak and not necessarily an easy target, but easier. Um, it can camouflage very well, but do they have a backup plan for whenever they get caught? Uh, there are many times where this insect will end up moving um, to, to find food or to lay its eggs, so what happens then? 
uh, if, if a predator sees it moving. Um, although they can hide very well when they're found, it is a whole different story. Uh, on the other hand, my insect has the best of both worlds. First of all, it is able to camouflage into many dark things, such as dirt, uh, tree bark, and dark leaves. From the get-go, it is already hard to find, similar to the giant leaf insect, only uh, in similar to the giant leaf insect's only ability, which is the camouflage. But beyond that, it is found uh, my insect has a backup plan. When found, it can uh, go through to layers of prote uh, protection. First, when a pr uh, predator is nearby, it shoots out a very foul-smelling uh, foul odor. The stink bug is being very polite, telling the predator that it would not taste very appetizing for it. So it's kind of win-win for both, uh, both insects. Uh, next, it has a very hard exoskeleton, which is good for many reasons. First, it protects them from many stings or bites. Next, it just makes it hard for the predators to penetrate, so it slows them down in huge amounts of ways. So I have a quick question for you. Mm -hmm. what, do, what do you do then when person or insects like mine are just like to taste anything? Um, they wouldn't would want to. Do? Like, would you go eat another human's poop? I mean, if it smells good. Or it doesn't smell good. It smells bad. And if it, it smells, smells bad, bad, I mean, that, it, it, it smells horrible. <laughs> it smells horrible. So Sam had a solid point talking about what had happened if my giant leaf insect was caught. However, this was his whole and only argument, mm. but but this insect lives its entire life working on its ca camel, camel and base, bases its entire bases its entire body on being able to hide. Why would they be confident in hiding if it did, it did not work? Also, the stink bug cannot be cannot blend in near as well as my giant leaf insect. So it would be much easier for a predator to see and to target. So if I'm in the forest and it's full of uh, leaves, how would you really, you know, how would you spot me? That's yeah. another question. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's another, that's another very good point. But once again, uh, I'll, I'll admit it, my bug does not hear, uh, have near the amount of um, well camouflaged body style as a giant leaf insect. Uh, but it's got the backup plans for if it does, got, if it does get caught. Uh, no predator will want to eat the stink bug because of how bad it smells. Uh, if the predator is weird enough to attack, it will have a very tough time because it will have to get through the hard exoskeleton as well. So in conclusion, the giant leaf insect is an extraordinary example of great defense mechanism. The insect provides outstanding opportunities for entomological research for the future. Uh, that's a, that's a very good conclusion, and in my conclusion, um, the brown stink bug has an overall better defense system and management. First of all, it has the same ability to camouflage as the giant leaf insect, but wait, there's more, just like the commercials. Unlike the giant leaf insect, it prepares uh, for the question of, what if I get caught? Alright, well thank you very much for watching, I hope you learned a little bit about these two insects. Y'all have a nice day, thanks for watching.